Okay, we're going to look at some more graphs here. I want to graph um, y equal 4 tangent x. And so over here what I've done is I've graphed y equal tangent x. And you know, tangent x has a period of pi. And when I graph one complete cycle, I start at 0. And then I go up to this asymptote right here that's at pi over 2. Then I start down at the asymptote and come back up to 0. At pi over 4, the tangent is 1, because so, uh, tangent sine over cosine, and pi over 4 being 45 degrees, sine and cosine of 45 degrees are equal, so tangent of that angle is 1. Same with uh, tangent of 3 pi over 4, it's going to end up to be negative 1. So if this is the graph of y equal tangent x, what does the graph of y equal 4 tangent x look like? Well, that 4 is just going to multiply every one of these green y values that you see right here by 4. So where the graph was 0, it's still going to be 0 because 4 times 0 is 0. Where the graph was 1, now it's going to be 4. And as this goes up over here, each of these values is going to be multiplied by 4 also. Now down here, where this value of y was 0, 4 times 0 is still 0. This value of y is negative 1, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Okay, so that's going to be down here. So my graph is just going to be a lot steeper than it was. It's hardly even going to be able to tell the, the uh, um, curvature of it, but there's still, it's still there. But in any case, that graph now is going to go up like this. It's hard for me to draw because it's so steep, but um, that's what it's going to do. It's going to look like that. If you were to zoom in on it, maybe shrink this down a little bit like that, you'd see more of that curvature that you get. It's still curved like that, but each of those values of y is multiplied by 4. Let's look at another problem. I want to graph y equal cosecant 3x here, and I know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here first. I'm going to write this as 1 over sine 3x. And so what I'll do is graph this function right here and then take its reciprocal. So the graph of y equals sine 3x. Well, it's going to have an amplitude of 1, and the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 3, that coefficient right there. So if I want to graph y equals sine 3x, let's see, it'll start at 0. It's going to go out to 2 pi over 3, so let's call that 2 pi over 3. Halfway will be pi over 3. I guess that'll be pi over 6, half of that. 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, so that's going to be pi over 2. Okay, so my sine graph will start at 0, go up to 1, back down to 0, down to negative 1, and then back up to 0. So that graph is going to look like this. And I suppose I should label the axes right here. Okay, now let's go back to our original function, which is y equal cosecant 3x. Now I'm back here to this, and I'm saying, well, cosecant's the reciprocal of sine. Well, here's all the uh, values of the sine function. They go between negative 1 and 1. Well, what's the reciprocal of 0? Reciprocal of 0, 1 over 0 is undefined. So I'm going to get a little asymptote right here. I'll just kind of draw that in. Same thing over here. When the sine is 0, its reciprocal is undefined. So I'll do that, and same thing over here. Okay, now how about here where the sine is 1? The reciprocal of 1 is 1. Down here where it's negative 1, the reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. So let's see. The graph should come down like this, hit that point, and then go back up. Come up like this, hit that point, and then go back down. And when you think about it, when I'm in here, when I have a value of, let's say, 1 half, for y equals sine x, well, its reciprocal is going to be 2, so I'm going to be up here. The further down I get, 1 third, I'm going to get 3. 1 fourth, 4. 1 fifth, 5. All the way down here to 1 100th, that reciprocal is, going to, reciprocal is going to be 100. So as this graph comes down to 0, this graph goes off to infinity. So in any case, that's a look at the graph of y equal cosecant 3x. Let's look at some more graphs. Okay, this function is y equal 3 secant 1 half x. So I did a little bit of algebra right here and just wrote 
the secant as the reciprocal of cosine. So the 3 stays out in front. It's 3 times the secant, so it's 3 times the reciprocal of cosine 1 half x. Well, let's see. I want to just graph this function right here, and then I'll take its reciprocal, then I'll multiply by 3. So this function right here has an amplitude of 1 in a period of 2 pi divided by 1 half. 2 pi divided by 1 half, that's going to be 4 pi. Okay, so if I just want to graph y equal cosine 1 half x, I'll label the axes this way. It'll start at 0, it'll end at 4 pi. Oh, this would be nice. So 2 pi is right in the middle, 1 pi, and then 3 pi. Okay, so if I graph that cosine function right there, I'll just do that in blue. Let's call that 1 and that negative 1, 2, and negative 2. Okay, so when I graph that, I'm going to get, it'll start at 1, go down to 0, down to negative 1, back up to 0, and then up to 1. So here is my cosine function. Okay, so now let's see what the graph of just secant 1 half x looks like. Well, that's going to be the reciprocal of this blue graph. So let me get my red pen. And what I'm going to do is say, well, every time the cosine is 0, its reciprocal secant is going to be undefined. So that'll give me an asymptote. So I'm going to draw on the little asymptote right here and then also over here. Okay, and then every time my cosine is 1, its reciprocal is 1. And when the cosine is negative 1, its reciprocal is negative 1. Okay, so I can draw that graph in. It looks like this. Okay, so my last graph then is going to be 3 times the secant of 1 half x. Well, that's just going to take all of these red values of y and multiply them by 3. So where y is 1 right now, when I multiply by 3, let me just go up here, I'm going to get 3. Where it's negative 1, whoops, who did that? Negative 1, that should be negative 2. And then I'll go down here and that'll be negative 3. So where this was negative 1, when I multiply by 3, I'm going to get negative 3. Up here where it was 1, now it's going to be 3. Now all these other values are going to be multiplied by 3 also, so they're going to move up. All these are going to be multiplied by 3, and they're going to move down. So I should get a graph that looks something like this. I'm going to have the same asymptotes, and my graph should look like that. So the black graph is the graph that we want, and what we do is we break it down into individual steps. First, I notice that the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. That gives me cosine 1 half x to graph. Okay, that's very nice because it turns out to be between negative 1 and 1, which means that taking the reciprocal is very easy. That's the red graph. Then the red graph is the graph of this, so all I have to do is multiply by 3 to get the graph I'm looking for. So I take all the red values of y, multiply them by 3, these all move up, these all move down, and I get the graph I'm looking for. Let's try another one. Looks like a cotangent function here, 3 plus 1 half cotangent pi over 2 times x. Let's just work on this part of it to begin with. Okay, so I'm going to interested in the period here. The period is going to be pi, the normal period for cotangent is pi, divided by that coefficient there, pi over 2. Okay, so that is pi times 2 over pi. Instead of dividing by pi over 2, I multiply by its reciprocal, 2 over pi. The pi's di divide out, and I have a period of 2. Okay, so I'll go back to my graph right here and just quickly label the x-axis. I'll just have that be 2 and that 1. And let's see, cotangent. Let's see, I got a 1 half right here. Cotangent normally at 1 half would be 1. But now since I'm multiplying by 1 half, it's going to be down here at 1 half. It's going to go through 0. Over here, it's going to be negative 1 half. And then these will be asymptotes for the graph. So let's draw that in to begin with. Put an asymptote right here. And I'll put another one right over here. And then I have my cotangent graph, which is should look something like this. OK, so that's 1 half cotangent pi over 2x. I did this first part right here just to see what the period is. I know my regular cotangent graph would not, would come down and go through 1 and negative 1 over here. So when I multiply by 1 half, they're going to go through 1 half and negative 1 half. So I can keep that out of there. What's left to do? 
just move everything up three units. So when I do that, whatever I had here that was, was one half is now going to be three and a half. Wherever this graph was zero, now it's going to be three. Let's move that over just a little bit. Zero, it's going to be three. And where the graph was negative one half, now it's going to be one half down from three like that. So I'm going to get a graph that um, has the same shape as this green graph, but everything's moved up three. So let's take a look and see if we can do that. Probably going to come down like this, go back around, and then down this way. So I don't quite have that right. Hard to do on this board right here, but I think that you get the idea. Everything that I have on the green graph is just moved up three units to get my red graph. So that's a look at a kind of complicated thing. Three plus one half cotangent pi over two times x. Change the period, change the amplitude, move everything up. Let's try another problem. This time I have a tangent graph, y equal tangent x plus pi over 4. Okay, it's going to look just like the graph of y equal tangent x, except it's going to have a phase shift of negative pi over 4. So the phase shift is equal to negative pi over 4. Okay, here in green I've drawn the graph of y equal tangent x, so all that this, that's going to happen is this graph is going to start pi over 4 units earlier than the green graph right here. So what does that mean? Well, Instead of starting here at 0, it's going to start over at negative pi over 4. I know negative pi over 4 is there because that's pi over 2 and, whoops, that's negative pi over 2, and that's positive pi over 2. So pi over 4 is right in the middle. Instead of ending at pi, it's going to end pi over 4 units sooner than that, which is at 3 pi over 4. There's pi over 2. Here's pi over 4. So what are we going to do? This asymptote, instead of being at pi over 2, is now going to be at pi over 4. Okay? So the graph is going to start here. Where it was 1 here, it's going to be 1 here. It's going to go to that asymptote. So it should look like that. And then over here, let's see, it was 1 right here. Now it's going to be 1 right here. And it's going to look like that. So I hope that that looks to you like... The red graph is just the green graph moved starting earlier at negative pi over 4. And it works out very nice because the period of the tangent function is pi, halfway is pi over 2, that pi over 4 is halfway there. So nice easy graph to move over if you want. So it's the red graph. Let's look at one more. All right, here we have 2 secant 2x minus pi over 2. Okay, I'm going to use my reciprocal relationship here and write this as 2 times 1 over cosine 2x minus pi over 2. So first, let's just work on this cosine 2x minus pi over 2. So I'm going to go over here and write it this way. Cosine of 2x minus pi over 2, okay, is going to be equal to cosine of 2 times x minus pi over 4. When I factor this 2 out of each term, when I factor the 2 out of this term, what's left is x. Factor 2 out of this term, what's left is pi over 4, so that 2 times pi over 4 will give me that pi over 2 back. That just makes it easy for me to see what the period's going to be. Period will be 2 pi divided by 2. That's that number, which is pi. And the phase shift is this number the number that follows that subtraction sign, so pi over 4. Okay, now let's see. I want to try to get an idea of where one complete cycle is going to occur here. So I'm going to take my original argument and look and see where x ends up when that argument is between 0 and 2 pi. So let's do that little inequality over here. Maybe I can do it down here. 0 less than or equal to 2x minus pi over 2 less than or equal to 2 pi. Did I do that? Is it still on the board? Yep. Okay. I'll add pi over 2 to all three members. 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. Less than or equal to 2x. Less than or equal to, okay, 2 pi. 2 pi is 4 pi over 2 plus another pi over 2. That's 5 pi over 2. Okay, and then I'll multiply each of these by 1 half and I'll end up with pi over 4, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 5 pi over 4. Okay, I'm making kind of a mess over here, but let's just, uh, here's where my uh, 
interval for one complete cycle is going to occur. So that will allow me to label the axes here. Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to start right here at pi over 4, and I want to count out to 5 pi over 4. Okay, so 1 pi over 4, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4 is right there. So 5 pi over 4 there, so that was uh, that's going to come out nice and even. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. This is 3 pi over 4. This is 4 pi over 4, which is pi, and then that's 5 pi over 4. Okay, so I take a look here. I see I got a phase shift of pi over 4. Well, there's the phase shift right there. I have a period of pi. Well, between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, that's pi units, so that works out great. Okay, it's a cosine curve. Looks like it's a cosine with an amplitude of 1. So if I label that as 1 and that negative 1, my cosine will start here, go down to 0, down to negative 1, back up to 0, and then up to 1. So here is my cosine curve that looks like that. Well, what I want is the secant graph. So I'm going to take, and everywhere my cosine is 0, I'm going to draw in a little asymptote because I know the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Everywhere my original graph is 1, its reciprocal will be 1. So I'll put those two points in. And then where my original graph is negative 1, that reciprocal is negative 1. So that allows me to draw this graph. Okay. And that's the graph of y equals secant 2x minus pi over 2. The last thing I have to do is multiply by 2. So that will take every value I have here that's 1. And let me see if I can get a different color here. When y was 1, when I multiply by 2, it's going to be 2. All of these will be multiplied by 2 also. Down here where I had negative 1, now it's going to be negative 2. Up here, positive 1, it's going to be positive 2. So I should get a graph that looks like this. And that will be my graph of y equal 2 secant 2x two minus pi over 2. So I break it down into little smaller graphs. First I graph y equal cosine 2x minus pi over 2. That's the red graph right here. Just the same method we always use. Okay, then I take its reciprocal, and that's the blue graph. And then to get my final graph, I take and multiply that reciprocal by 2, which just multiplies every y value that you see on the blue graph by 2 to give us the green graph. Okay, so there's a look at graphing some trig functions.